So far this season, there are a ton of NHL players that are having a breakout year and are really getting the credit that they deserve. Guys like Anthony Duclair, who has 21 goals and is leading Ottawa in scoring and was selected to the All-Star team. You also have players like JT Miller, who has been playing amazing for the Vancouver Canucks and is well on his way to having the best year of his career. And then you also have young players like Andrei Sveshnikov, who in his sophomore season has really broken out and became a star. And since he scored the lacrosse-style Michigan goal on two different occasions this year, he has been in the headlines a good amount. But I have talked about all those guys a good amount on the channel so far this season, so for today's video, I kind of want to shed some light on some players that are having an amazing season that no one is really talking about. So the subject of today's video is 7 NHL players having an extremely underrated season. And of course, if you guys are new and have not already, make sure to click that subscribe button and click the bell to turn on notifications so that you never miss a video. The first player I want to talk about is Brian Russell of the Pittsburgh Penguins who has quietly been having an amazing season and is a massive reason why Pittsburgh was able to remain a very good team amongst all the injuries they've had this year. Rust is currently third on the Penguins in scoring with 19 goals and 21 assists for 40 points in 32 games. He's 8 points over a point per game and if you do the math, over an 82 game schedule, he's scoring at a 100 point pace, which is crazy for a guy like Brian Rust. Heading into the season, there were a lot of Pittsburgh Penguins fans calling for Brian Russ to be traded. I bet you those people are pretty silent right now considering how good he's been for them this year. The thing that really blows my mind is Brian Russ' career high was 38 points. He did that in 69 games in 2017-2018 and last year he had 35 points in 72 games and he's already at 40 points. He's broken his career high already and he's only played 32 games. Everybody kind of knew that Brian Russ was definitely capable of producing more offense than he has over the past two seasons, but you're definitely lying if you say you saw this coming. And I'm sure there's going to be a good amount of people that say he's only putting up these numbers because he plays with guys like Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin, while you gotta remember Sidney Crosby was injured for the majority of the games while Brian Rust was putting up these great numbers and playing amazing for Pittsburgh. It's honestly insane what the Penguins have been able to do this season given the circumstances and all the major injuries that they've had, and while a lot of people give credit to guys like Evgeny Malkin and Jake Gensel while he was in the lineup, I think we gotta talk about Brian Rust a little bit more. And with the Penguins currently sitting fourth overall in the entire NHL and them just getting Crosby back and he had four points in his first game back, this team is looking like a legit contender. Next up, I want to talk about Blue Jackets goaltender Elvis Mers Lincolns and is he ever playing amazing lately? And sure, maybe his year hasn't been underrated because over the past week or two, there's actually been a good amount of people bringing his name up. But honestly, I kind of just wanted to use this video as an excuse to talk about him because I really haven't at all on the channel so far this season. And it's pretty crazy what confidence can do for an NHL player, especially a goaltender. This is a guy who earlier in the season, like a little over a month ago, we were talking about him and him not being able to buy a win for the Columbus Blue Jackets and Corpus Allo was getting all the wins. And then when the news broke that Corpus Allo was going to miss an extended period of time, a lot of people, including myself, kind of wrote off this Columbus team because I... I honestly didn't think they're going to be able to rely on Mers Lincolns to give them good goaltending. But man, has he ever proved me wrong. You look at his numbers now, he's got a 6-6-4 record, a 9-21 save percentage, and a 2.53 goals against average, and has a shutout in back-to-back -back games. And when you look at what his play has done for Columbus as a team, they're right in the thick of the playoff hunt. They're currently tied in points with the Philadelphia Flyers for that second wildcard spot, but the Flyers do hold the spot over them because they have a game in hand. But if Columbus continues to play this well, they're 6-2-2 two and two in their last 10, and if they continue to get amazing goaltending from Elvis Mers Lincolns, then they are a team that definitely could find themselves in a playoff spot come the end of the year. And it's pretty crazy because heading into the year, I kind of thought Mers Lincolns and Corpus Allo would be one of the lower end goalie tandems in the NHL, but if Corpus Allo can get healthy and play like he was before he went down with injury, and if Mers Lincolns can continue to play like this, then they're kind of one of the better tandems in the league. Moving along now, I want to talk about defenseman Neil Pionk for the Winnipeg Jets because I don't think people realize how good and how important he has actually been for the Winnipeg Jets so far this season. Back when Neil Pionk was traded to the Winnipeg Jets along with a first round pick in exchange for Jacob Truba, a lot of people looked at that trade as an absolute fleecing and that the New York Rangers were the clear cut winners getting a defenseman like Truba. Because Pionk was coming off a pretty bad season for New York while Jacob Truba was coming off a great year for the Winnipeg Jets, but 
but considering the Winnipeg Jets drafted Vili Hanola with that first round pick and he looks like a blue chip prospect for them and if Neil Pionk can continue to play this way then the trade really doesn't look that bad for them at all. So far this season Pionk is leading the Winnipeg Jets in ice time per night that is ahead of Josh Morrissey. Pionk is playing 23 minutes and 16 seconds while Morrissey's at 23 minutes and 1 second and really the most impressive aspect of Pionk's game this season is just his overall play. Everybody knew since his time spent in New York that he was a good offensive defenseman and had the capability of putting up a lot of points from the blue line. It was just a matter of his all-around game and him not really being able to play in his own end, but that has definitely been put to rest so far this year. He's got 4 goals and 26 assists for 30 points in 47 games. The 30 points is a career high and we still got a ton of season left. And his plus 7 rating is 2nd on the team, only behind Patty Laine who is a plus 10. That's pretty crazy to think that Pionk and Laine, both players that were kind of criticized for them not being able to play defensively, currently have the two best plus minuses on the Jets. I kind of find that a little bit ironic. Moving on now to the next player, we have another defenseman on the team that Neil Pionk was actually traded from, and that defenseman is Tony D'Angelo for the New York Rangers, who has really broken out and became a star on the blue line for New York this year. D'Angelo isn't a defender who's gonna play a ridiculous amount of minutes per night. That's more so suited for guys like Jacob Truba and even Brady Shea plays more minutes than D'Angelo, but man, has he ever been dynamite offensively from the blue line this season. D'Angelo is currently third on the New York Rangers in scoring, only behind Artemi Panarin and Ryan Strom, as D'Angelo already has 11 goals and 25 assists for 36 points in just 45 games. He has a real shot of cracking the 60 point mark, and that would be super impressive. And it's honestly really nice to see that Tony D'Angelo has finally found a home in the NHL because for only being a 24 year old he has bounced around the league a good amount. He was drafted in the first round 19th overall in 2014 by the Tampa Bay Lightning. He was then traded to the Arizona Coyotes and then he was once again traded to the Rangers. And if you look around the league and look at players production and the money they're making he has to have one of the better contracts in the entire NHL as he's only making 925000 dollars this year. It's going to be super interesting to see what happens because he's going to be in for a pretty big raise at the end of the season and the Rangers don't necessarily have a lot of money to spend but whatever ends up happening I think he's going to be well worth the money he makes and he definitely earned a big raise with his play this season. Next up I want to talk about a fellow Nova Scotian in Alex Kalorn who is having a really good season for the Tampa Bay Lightning and obviously when you think about the Lightning and when people talk about them you're always going to bring up guys like Braden Point, Nikita Kucherov, Steven Stamkos, Victor Hedman, and Andre Vasilevsky, all the big name superstars that they have, but man is Alex Kalorn ever an amazing role player for that team. Kalorn's career high in points is 47, that came in the 2017-2018 season, and he's already at 30 points in just 44 games and has tied his career high in goals with 19 already. If you do the math, he's scoring at about a 70 point pace, and for a guy like Alex Kalorn, you would take that any day of the week. And with him, the offense is honestly just kind of a bonus because he is like a Swiss army knife. He's a guy you can slot into the top six to play with skilled players. He can even kill some penalties, play a checking role in the third line. He can play the physical game. He can really do it all. And he's an underrated piece to this Tampa Bay Lightning team for sure. He's definitely a player who I think should have his name brought up a little bit more when people talk about important players on the Tampa Bay Lightning. And I don't know, it just must be something in the water in Nova Scotia that produces very good NHL players. Next up, we're going to do exactly as Darren Dreger says and we're going to talk about Dominic Kubalik of the Chicago Blackhawks who is having an amazing first pro hockey season over here in North America. Kubalik is a 24 year old winger who was selected in the 7th round 191st overall by the LA Kings back in 2013 and obviously he didn't end up signing with the Los Angeles Kings and over the past two seasons he's been playing over in Switzerland and putting up great numbers. He had 27 points in 25 games in 2017-18 and last year in 50 games he had 25 goals and 57 total points. This summer he signed a one-year deal with the Blackhawks and it looks like it has really worked out for Chicago as Kubelik is currently second on the team in goals scored with 18 ahead of guys like Alex Abrinkit, like Dylan Strom and Jonathan Tays. He's only behind Patty Kane and I don't know what it is about the Blackhawks but it seems like they just have a knack for finding European players whose games translate well to the NHL. I'm sure a lot of you guys remember when this dude was a member 
of the Blackhawks. But let's just hope they don't trade away Kubalik for basically nothing because they're afraid to pay him. It'll be interesting to see if Kubalik keeps up at this pace for the remainder of the season, but even if he scores in like the 25 to 30 goal range, then this is a great find for the Blackhawks. And for all my advanced stats junkies out there, looking at this graph, it seems like Kubalik's game has translated just fine from the European style over here to North America, and he's only 24 years old. He could have a pretty bright future in the NHL. And now to finish out the video, I want to talk about Tanner Pearson of the Vancouver Canucks, who is having a great offensive season and is well on pace to have the best of his career so far. And you hear a lot of people talking about JT Miller and how amazing he's been for Vancouver, and rightfully so, but I think a lot of people got to start talking about Tanner Pearson a little bit more. Outside of Canucks fans, I don't really think people realize how good he's actually been. He's currently fifth on the team in scoring. He's behind the players that you would expect him to be behind, guys like Elias Pettersson, JT Miller, Brock Besser, and Bo Horvat. But so far this season in 47 games, Tanner Pearson has 12 goals and 22 assists for 34 total points and has been a very reliable top six forward for them. And the funny part about this is the Canucks traded away Eric Branson to get Tanner Pearson. They basically got him for free because it was known that the team wanted to unload Gabranson and his contract. Tanner Pearson and the Vancouver Canucks pretty much clicked from the start because in the 19 games he played for the team last year, he was great as well. He had 9 goals and 3 assists for 12 points after being traded from Pittsburgh. So that is going to wrap up today's video. I really hope you guys did enjoy. Obviously, there were numerous other players that I could have chose that are probably having an underrated year to some people, but these are just 7 players that I really wanted to talk about. So with all that being said, I hope you guys all enjoyed today's video. If you did, please make sure to drop a like on it and subscribe to the channel for daily NHL content, and I will see you guys on tomorrow's video.